So I'm working tonight on my Glare Shield dashboard assembly, as the little sticker says from Sling. Um, what is going to make this project quick and easy is this template that I got from Midwest Panel Builders as part of my avionics package. So this exactly matches my panel. Obviously, that's from the rear. Um, so I even put it on there just to make me feel better. But it, it's an exact, probably CAD drawing replica. Um, so I put it on here with some clamps, which I've removed now. I drilled a hole, put in a Clico, just got all the Clicos put in. And now I, had to, I have to cut off all this excess um, to get down to, you can see like this side is lower than this side, but you can see the corresponding, obviously all the switches are on the left. Um, this is from the back. And then there's not hardly anything on below the G3X screen on this side. Excuse my, my workbench here. Um, so, uh, you can see like this is the cutout where the G3X screen is going to sit right here and then the center stack. So anyway, it's uh, I've just got to cut it out along the template. So what I'm going to do is, uh, well, actually the first thing I did was I got a razor blade and I, I uh, basically scored the leather pretty good uh, all the way around everywhere. There's um, the leather along the template and uh because I just don't want it to pull away and have the glue fail and have to get into re-gluing this leather. This looks really nice. And I'm using um, my DeWalt oscillating tool, and I've only done just this one little section. Um, I'm using a, uh, it's actually a, a metal blade um, because it had finer teeth. I thought it would work better all the other blades that I have are for wood and they're a little more aggressive and I didn't want to be too aggressive with this. Um, but it will cut through the template. So you got to, you can kind of see a little shiny. I got a little, uh, too close to the template, but what I'm going to do is cut it, not perfect, but get it close with the oscillating tool. And then I'm going to come back with this, um, uh, this drum sander drum and, uh, and just sand it down so that it's flush with the, uh, with the template. Um, also, I've installed just, I just roughed in these to see how they would fit. So the, the kit comes with these from Sling installed and I just popped them out. Um, and this is a okay vent, um, but in my redesign of my heating and ventilation system, I'm not gonna have the Sling valve that turns off the air, the fresh airflow, which my goal is to have better airflow, uh, fresh air. I live in the Southeast, so it's, I'm more worried about heat than I am cold, um, for the bulk of my flying. But this, this vent, as you can see, it opens all the way up, but then when it closes, it closes really tight. And what I'm hoping is that this is going to stop enough cold air from flowing in just with the valve itself in there, as you can see it, um, that I'm not going to have too much leakage. And, uh, and then I can, if I have a little, I can even point it away, um, that this will work to stop the bulk of the airflow coming in. Um, that's my hope. I didn't want to get into, I don't have or, or the capability to design some fancy, um, uh, you've probably seen the build videos from Evan. He's got a fancy computer controlled uh, valve system that looks really neat. I don't have the capability to make that. And I've looked online and there are some valves that are on the market for this kind of thing, uh, but I wasn't sure they were going to work and they're kind of expensive. So we're just going to be at the mercy of the Aveo Max events. And this is, this is what I'm using uh, from, it's the Air Maxi with a two inch. Um, the backer is two inch, so I'm, I'm going to use uh, uh, 
some 3D printed parts and a, a piece of a scat tube to connect it up. Um, and so I have two inch scat tube, so I got the two inch version. But this fits just right in this hole from the factory, so I didn't have to do anything to it with that vent I just showed you. Um, I did have to do a little sanding back here to make it sit flat because this curve was kind of built up with some resin. So I just did three minutes of sanding with a little Dremel sandal tool, sanding tool uh, to make the, the screw on back plate sit a little tighter. Um, I, don't, I haven't even tightened this in, but it, it's sitting better now. So I think we're good. But anyway, I'll report back after I have removed uh, all of this material and uh, show you what the finished product looks like. So here we are 10 minutes later, maybe. Um, I got all that trimmed off. As you can see here, I got the little pieces. It's just fiberglass with the leather uh, glued onto it. Uh, so it's cut off. And then uh, in the corners, I used my little, I have this little hacksaw um, to get up into here and here just because I didn't have anything to get up in that corner easily. And then I went through and just sanded everything down with, uh, first with my, uh, the sanding drum, and then I finished it up with, uh, it's toast now, but the, um, the little Dremel sanding wheel. But I think it's, uh, that's good enough. Um, obviously the, the panel, you know, overlays this, so this is just to give clearance for uh, the equipment behind it.